Got clients with scapular winging? This is Dr. Evan Osar. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. Scapular winging is one of the biggest issues that we have with our older clients that we train with overhead motion, which affects their overhead motion, I should say, and compromises their rotator cuff, compromises their neck, and oftentimes it compromises their low back because oftentimes when they can't get their scapula into the right position, they'll start to compensate from their low back. So this information that I'm going to share with you today, so welcome, I'm going to share with you the things that we do, we, our go-to strategies when we're working with older clients that have shoulder issues. When I say older clients, old is relative <laughs> because I consider myself sort of in that range right now at 52 years of age, which I can't even believe that I'm 52 years of age. <laughs> so, and I got, this, I got this question the other day from our help desk email. And a woman said, I've been following your Two Anatomy Geeks series for the last year during quarantine. So thank you for being part of our Two Anatomy Geeks community. I'll tell you more about that before we finish here. She said, I feel like I know you and I have a question for you. I do coaching for a swim club and I'm the assistant trainer to the swim club. And the head trainer has our athletes doing scapular push-ups. Now you're like, oh, well, I don't train athletes. And I'm like, that's okay, because this information applies to our older clients as well. It applies to all of us. So scapular push-ups are, generally they're done on the floor. So especially if you're working with an athlete, you'd be doing this on the floor. But a scapular push-up is essentially where you're here and you may go into a push-up and then you come out and then you push through to, to really engage the serratus. Now, if you've been following us, you know the serratus is a broad muscle. It comes from your first rib. So if you touch your first rib up here, the serratus attaches all the way up here to your first rib. And then it goes all the way down to your ninth rib, which is somewhere around right here. And if you bring your arm overhead, you'll feel that serratus anterior contract. Because essentially what it's doing, along with other muscles, so when we say serratus anterior, we don't mean just serratus anterior. However, what the serratus anterior does is it brings that scapula, so this is my right scapula, or a model of my right scapula, it brings the scapula in towards the rib cage to upwardly rotate and posterior tilt. Most, mostly it's more of a posterior tilter, but it will also upwardly rotate to get the arm overhead to keep the arm stable once the arm is in the overhead position. However, it also works during this motion here as well. So the scapula is also stable in that posterior tilted position, that position right there. So the scapula is nice and flush up against the ribcage. Now, obviously, scapular winging is when the scapula comes away, that inferior tip of the scapula, so this tip right here, comes away from the ribcage. So that's why people do scapular push-ups and recommend it. And if you look at the research, so you have to look at the research, right? So go to the research and look at the research. And they'll say that EMG studies, so electromyograph, so that studies the electrical activity of a muscle or how strongly a muscle is contracting, it'll show that, yes, if you do this action right here, this push through, that will activate serratus anterior. Here's the challenge. If your client already has scapular winging, and now you're having them do an exercise that's pushing through this way, what is the likelihood that the scapula is going to go from this position to magically coming back to this position and coming around the rib cage as it should? Well, I've been doing this for a long time, 23 years. If you know my history, rotator cuff tears, labral tears in both shoulders. Did scapular push-ups for a long time. Didn't fix my shoulder problems. In fact, I've seen this exercise in particular, amongst a few others, completely perpetuate and even create issues with many of our clients. Hey, Pete, my best friend from New Jersey is on as well. Oh, Rahul from India, he's on as well. Hello, my friend. I'll see you, I'll talk to you later on today about the shoulder. So one of the things with scapular push-ups is it does not improve the position of the scapula. In fact, it will perpetuate many of the scapular issues, especially scapular winging, when clients are performing this exercise because what we need them to do is bring that scapula around the rib cage, not just push through. Because what the scapula, what the serratus needs to do is control that scapula as the arm goes overhead and then more importantly, or as importantly I should say, control it as it comes back down. So the first thing we do with our clients is teach our clients how to position their shoulders. 
So that's why we do, you probably see me do it. You can use a resistance band, but we generally will use a non-stretchy strap, non-stretchy strap, <laughs> a strap that doesn't stretch. We'll have them do that band pull apart and we'll have them control the scapular position. Just teach them how to control scapular position as the arm moves. So you've seen me perform that before. Our next go-to exercise is actually having them perform a supported position because the hand, we'll talk about this later on, Rahul, the hand and wrist feed into the shoulder to help shoulder stability. So the next exercise we have our clients do is a plank on the wall or on a surface, like an elevated surface, so the client understands how to get the scapula in the right position. So they take that tilt out of the scapula and get the scapula to wrap around the rib cage like that. And that's why this position is so valuable and so it works so well to help the client get that scapula into a better position. From there, then we just load this pattern up a bit more. So I'm gonna jump up here on the table. So what we do is essentially have our clients in this quadruped position right there. So again, it's teaching the client how to isometrically control that scapula in upward rotation and posterior tilt. The next progression is just having our clients here and then they just elevate the knees. So they're in this isometric control position. So we're teaching our clients to control the position before we actually teach them how to move from the position. The final progression from this supported position is coming from this quadruped position and now we'll do a modified down dog position. So there, we're teaching the client to go into a short and serratus position and then control it through the eccentric phase, which is a longer position. And the harder position for them to control is actually here, not up here. This is easier to control because the serratus is shorter. This is more challenging control, to control in this position here. And when the client is doing it well, they should feel it and engage from here, not in their neck, not in the top of their shoulder, not in the front of their shoulder. So that way, you're teaching the client how to use that serratus in an optimal manner, how to isometrically control it, and then how to move their body around that stable scapula. That's been the most effective progression we found to use with our clients. And no, that's not all we do. We have to do our myofascial release, we do our activation patterns, we progress our client appropriately, but that modified quadruped position, or the quadruped position, to the modified down dog position is our go-to sequence and progression for helping clients develop more optimal control of the scapula, maintain that thorax in the right position because that's a big piece of it too, is the scapula must sit upon, the scapula must sit upon the rib cage and be flush up against that rib cage. So the ribs are sitting here and the scapula sits against the back of the rib cage many of our clients do not have the optimal position of their rib cage, so therefore they won't have an optimal position of their scapula or control of the scapula. So they go hand in hand. So that progression and that quadruped position really works well to help our clients stabilize the scapula, improve and optimize serratus anterior control as well as control around the scapula complex. Helps so many clients that have chronic neck issues, shoulder issues, rotator cuff issues, as well as upper back issues. I just use this with a a young guy, 25 years old, young, 25, 25 years of age is young to me now. <laughs> so he's had chronic issues, been seen a chiropractor, seen physical therapists, been doing all kinds of exercise from online. This is the first time, he's like, he said to me yesterday, he's like, this is the first time I've actually gotten relief from anything I've tried. This was part of the progression that we used. We're still working him through some of the progressions, but we did the myofascial release, we did this band pull apart, and then we progress them to the quadruped position. So I know it works. It's what I use to help my own shoulders. It's what I use with my clients, like I said, with a client last night. So if you're looking for more information, hopefully that helped explain why the push-up plus isn't so great and why the quadruped position, that progression works so well. And if you're looking for more information, check out two Anatomy Geeks. Hello, my friend, Jackie Bachmeyer, my good friend from Houston, Texas. Hopefully I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs> keeping my fingers crossed. I'm sure you're keeping your fingers crossed as well that I make it down there. So if you're looking for, looking for more information, check out Two Anatomy Geeks. The link is below this video or next to this video. It's a three part series. It's about five to six hours of information about the scapula shoulder control IMS baby. That's right, Jackie. 
So it's, it's about, it'll teach you all about the anatomy around the shoulder complex, the rotator cuff, because so many of our older clients that have scapular issues also have rotator cuff issues, and that can also drive then and perpetuate scapular issues. So you have to address that as well. We'll teach you about the anatomy around the shoulder complex, and we'll make it really fun and simple. Jill makes it fun, I just make it simple. <laughs> and then we'll teach you the, the most effective corrective exercises, and we'll show you how to progress this into the functional patterns. Actually, some of these videos were filmed right down in JB Studio in Houston, Texas, because I was down there when I was doing that series. So you'll get to see Jackie Bachmeyer Studio, where she specializes in training older adults, like we do in our clinic as well. So check out that link below if you're looking for more information. It's one of the easiest, best ways, most fun ways to learn anatomy, and more importantly, as importantly, apply, yes, really, Jackie, <laughs> apply this information to your clients, directly into the programs that you're, you're already using with success. So if you have any comments, feel free to put them below. If you have any questions, put them below, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. We look forward to seeing you in Two Anatomy Geeks. The community is a wonderful community, great, like-minded individuals that are out there doing great work, like JB, like Rahul, that are out there doing great work with their clients and helping to transform their clients' lives and really being that light for their clients. Because right now, we need light more than we need anything else. There's a lot of dark forces and things happening around the world, in our own country here as well. So be the light for your clients, for your community. Give them that hope, give them the faith, and bring your best to them every single day. And together, my friends, we can change the world. Thanks so much for watching. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Make it a great day. We'll see you next time. Take care.